Sales specifically are a critical factor that unfortunately leads to the demise of more farms than diseases and technical breakdowns combined. In fact, a significant majority of entrepreneurs who plan to embark on or actually start fish farming ventures often stumble precisely at the sales and marketing stage rather than encountering difficulties with the technical aspects of the business itself. Yes, that's really true. Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I am an engineer and have been building fish farms for over 10 years. Many beginners are often convinced that the most important thing is to build the farm, equip it with the right equipment, raise the fish, and then somehow figure out the sales later. This is one of the most common misconceptions that frequently exist when starting this business. I would genuinely say that you should absolutely start with sales. Today, we will thoroughly discuss the three most prevalent and common mistakes in sales that frequently lead beginners, especially those new to the field, to encounter significant problems and substantial financial losses, and crucially, how to effectively and strategically avoid these pitfalls to ensure greater success. Let's get started. And the very first and most significant mistake is having absolutely no clear strategy. Very often I hear phrases like, come on sales, we'll figure that out much later. Let's diligently build the farm first, then carefully raise the fish, and only then will we find somewhere to effectively sell them. On the one hand, it's good not to be afraid of anything and to move forward. On the other hand, if you don't clearly define your sales strategy in advance and don't meticulously work it out properly, you might simply go down the entirely wrong path, choose the incorrect type of fish, the unsuitable weight category, or the completely wrong direction direction for your business development. And then, no matter how diligently you try, once you've already successfully raised the fish, you might unfortunately end up facing only numerous problems and realize that you should have acted differently. But by then, it's too late. That's why it's very important to think in advance about where and how you will sell the fish you raise. Will it be wholesale or retail? What specific groups of clients will these be for? Try perhaps to actually sell some fresh fish and truly find out who genuinely needs it? Yes, of course, many wholesalers will say, first give us the product, we'll try it, and then we'll decide. That's a fact. But nothing is stopping you from taking products from another farm and trying to sell them to those same clients. You need to have a very clear understanding of logistics so that logistics don't eat up your margin. Because if you're selling, say, live fish a thousand kilometers away, you still need to figure out how to deliver that live fish. That means transporting them in live fish containers, which adds extra costs to your production expenses, and quite significant ones at that. That's why I strongly recommend carefully thinking through your sales strategy in advance. Who are you selling to? Wholesale or retail? At what prices? Is the market really ready to accept it? And will you actually have enough sales volume before you even start the farm? Because once you understand the realities of the sales market, you might slightly adjust your decisions regarding which type of fish to focus on, what scale to pursue, and how to proceed. But even if you possess a very clear and well-defined sales strategy, without the proper comprehensive documentation, absolutely no one will truly want your fish. I would certainly put it this way. The current market reality is that everyone buys fish mainly and only if there are proper, clean and readily available documents. Foyi. I've also often heard entrepreneurs say things like, let's just grow the fish first and we'll sort out the paperwork as we go, everything will be fine. As a result, the RAS farm ends up being set up somewhere, I don't know, in a zone where fish farming is not allowed, maybe just for recreation, for example, or there are some other nuances. In other words, the farm is set up in a place where on paper it's not possible to raise fish, not on agricultural land, not in an industrial area, but for example, in some warehouse or something like that. And after that, the problems begin. The veterinarians won't issue a certificate and you can't get a veterinary passport. Consequently, you also can't officially sell this particular fish. You can't connect to the mercury system either, which is a significant limitation. So in the end, you can only sell the fish under the table, unfortunately. And in reality, almost no one buys under the table. And if someone does indeed buy it, it's only with a truly huge discount. That's precisely why, to avoid potential problems with successfully selling your product in the end, you must always carefully check in advance exactly where and precisely how you're building your farm, so that there are absolutely no issues whatsoever with essential documents or obtaining them easily. But even if you've diligently done everything absolutely right, in terms of all the necessary paperwork, there's still another significant problem that can completely ruin everything. A sales launch that's simply too late. How does this usually happen? The farm is built, the paperwork is done, the fish are raised, and then we start thinking about where to sell the fish. 
even if you've meticulously prepared in advance where to sell everything, it still doesn't guarantee you a truly smooth and successful sales launch. And then your farm, already having market-ready fish that truly want to eat and grow and are actively overcrowding the already full tanks even more. You are then consequently forced to significantly reduce feeding, keep the fish hungry and ultimately lose valuable productivity simply because you didn't plan your comprehensive sales effectively in advance. Therefore, my considered recommendation is this. If you are planning to build a new farm, even at the initial construction stage or at the very beginning of growing, you should take someone else's fish and then start selling it. This way, you will truly already encounter the real conditions of the actual market. You will understand what is actually happening with sales. You will understand at what price people will actually buy from you, in what volumes you will get your first bumps, learn about the pitfalls, and by the time your own fish are grown, you will already be prepared and have at least a minimal pool of clients. That's precisely why I strongly recommend starting your sales efforts not when you already have absolutely nowhere to put the fish from your overflowing tanks, but rather when you are just beginning to raise them, or even better, when you are just starting to meticulously build your aquaculture farm. And finally, something that seems quite obvious, but I still genuinely want to mention this crucial point. Please don't treat the essential marketing of your valuable products as merely an afterthought. Instead, take meticulous care of your professional website, your active social media presence, and diligently building a strong and loyal client base well in advance. You could even do cold calls if that's appropriate and necessary in your specific case. In other words, it is crucial to begin the process of building your marketing strategy well ahead of time so it doesn't end up being a mere afterthought or just a small extra tail attached to your existing farm operations. Consequently, you might find yourself with robust and efficient production capabilities but a significantly underdeveloped and ineffective marketing strategy. Marketing simply won't allow you to achieve the necessary sales volume and accordingly, this will inevitably and negatively affect everything. That's precisely why in a new business venture, everything should be carefully balanced production, marketing efforts, and sales alike. Well, all I can truly do is recommend that you diligently avoid the common mistakes most beginners often make. By watching my channel, I think many things will become clearer and more obvious to you. I hope you found this helpful once again. Give this video a like if you did. Subscribe to my channel. This was Anton Pelcher with my channel about how to farm fish and make good money from it. See you next time.